I'm Emily Moshak, and you are listening to Tuned In to NoCo, Town Square Media's show that lets you know what matters in NoCo. I'm talking today with Ann Hutchison, the Executive Vice President of the Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce, and Josh Burks, the Economic Health and Redevelopment Director at the City of Fort Collins. Thank you so much for being here today. We're here today to talk about the NoCo Recovers platform. Now, for those who don't know, what is NoCo Recovers? Well, NoCo Recovers is a one-stop shop uh, stood up by a number of economic development partners throughout the region, um, basically to provide streamlined access for businesses to resources that can support them in this um, trying economic time. How about you, Ann? What would how would you describe the NoCo Recovers platform? Oh, absolutely, Josh did a really good job of of hitting the high points, but really it is this collaboration across Northern Colorado of economic developers, chambers of commerce, folks that are working really, really hard to try to create and consolidate all of this information that has just been coming coming at all of us for about a month now and um, making it into that as he said, a one-stop shop so business can find resources in order to really look towards recovery as we make our way through this crisis. Mm -hmm. How did the idea of No Co Recovers come to be? So it, I mean, it kind of came out of a couple of different places. Uh, Some of us economic development professionals were lamenting that we felt overwhelmed by all the information coming at us and needed a way to kind of begin to get to the most pertinent information. At the same time, uh, a number of folks, at least here in the city of Fort Collins, were reaching out and suggesting that um, they felt as business owners, it was very difficult to kind of sort through all the noise. They were getting information from so many different places. And so I think just a number of us got together and sort of said, hey, why not stand up a single resource uh, location that people can go to that's got you know, that's been curated by professionals to basically provide the most useful information. And uh, from there, we took off and, you know, our partners at the chamber and others were all sort of threw in and and away we went. I'll also say, Emily, we were so fortunate to have um, Old Town Media as a key partner as we created this website. Um, as Josh tells a story, um, we went from really finalized idea to a full on website in about 10 days. And so that was um, no small feat. And we just really appreciate our friends at Old Town Media for um, being behind the scenes, being our technical folks. And then again, all of those partners across the area that helped us to really narrow in our focus and make sure that we were providing the best information possible for as many businesses as possible. That's awesome. Now, I know that you can access this resource at nocorecovers.com, but can you give me an overview of what the website is like and how business owners can best use it to their advantage? Sure. I think there are two primary uh, functionalities that the website provides that I would really encourage um, business owners to go and get familiar with. And both of those are accessible right there from the the front page of nocorecovers.com. The first is uh, the highlights of the CARES Act. This is the federal stimulus act that was passed at the end of March uh, and provides a number of different um, support and funding tools to businesses. Uh, And what we've tried to do is make a very simple Uh, overview available for businesses that covers uh, how do you access the payroll protection plan uh, and also how do you access the economic injury disaster loans, which are the two primary vehicles that are in the CARES Act to provide support to businesses. So that's resource number one. Resource number two is what we call the hub, the resource hub. It's a a growing everyday database of available resources that could support businesses. And what we've tried to do is make it um, filterable through a series of intuitive uh, filters that allow for a business to go on. And rather than seeing 80 or 90 links and and get overwhelmed by all the available information, be able to pick a couple of filters and quickly narrow it down to those things that might help them best uh, and 
uh, then get just those, you know, ha small handful of resources that they can start to uh, sift through and understand. So those are probably the two biggest pieces of functionality. The site also provides up to date news from all the different communities that are feeding information in, uh, as well as information on how to comply with stay at home order, how to, you know, where to go to determine if you're an essential business and so on. Lots and lots of information. But CARES Act highlights in the resource hub are probably the two um, I think we feel are the most useful for businesses. And I'll also note um, two other highlights of the site are that uh, it does have a translation button, so <clears throat> you can um, switch to a Spanish version of the site, which um, we're again just thrilled to be able to offer. And then there's also a survey button on the site. We're really working hard to try to understand what issues are impacting business right now as we make our way through the crisis, as well as what kinds of resources they're needing in the future. And that survey tool has been just a fantastic way for us to, to keep an eye on that pulse and also make sure we're directing our efforts in the spaces that they need. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me more about that? I know it'll obviously be different for every business, but what are some of the most common challenges that you've seen businesses face and that they've told you about through this tool? Well, certainly the, the big thing we're observing across northern Colorado is that we're highly dependent upon what we call the gig economy, those people that are consultants or one person small shops. And um, they are the people that and the businesses that make our northern Colorado community so special. And um, unfortunately, they're being hit somewhat the hardest right now. Not a lot of the tools right now address folks that work from a 1099 or, or are part of that gig economy. And so we're getting a lot of that insight from the survey that we need to come up with ways that um, as soon as any of these federal programs become available, we get them to those folks right away, as well as creating local resources. Yeah, and then I think uh, what I would add to that is uh, lots of businesses just trying to sort of sort their way through uh, some of the issues I described earlier, like, you know, are we an essential business or not? Um, how do we comply with, you know, physical distancing requirements while still being open? Um, you know, and then and then a lot of just, you know, what's what's the best thing for me and for my employees? in terms of trying to seek the federal assistance. So um, a lot of, I think, businesses just trying to figure out how they navigate this and, and you know, still operate to the best of their abilities in this context. So um, I think we've had something like over uh, several hundred responses throughout the county, um, and we're now sorting that data and mining that data to also, you know, influence things like, um, you know, local business uh, relief funds that might be standing up and um, other tools that we're, you know, con consistently or, or trying to evaluate and think about how um, we might be able to provide, you know, additional support to businesses. Right. This is such a confusing time for business owners and NOCO Recovers is such a great resource. But in this interview now, what are some of your general tips to help businesses stay afloat amidst COVID-19? So uh, two things, I'll start Emily and then throw it over to Josh. Um, number one is also on the site, there is a connect now button. So it's a spot where people can submit to us their questions and we can connect them with advisors and resources to help them find the very, very best path that makes sense for them. So we want to make sure to showcase that and make sure people know that that resource is available. And then as far as messages that we're trying to push out for people to survive during this time, especially our business friends, is um, number one, and, and this is true for businesses, it's also true for residents, but reach out to your landlord. Um, it, you, everybody has a bill coming due on April 1st, that, and I think a lot of people are very anxious about that. But I will say our real estate community, as well as our banking community, is really very interested in helping people navigate through that space. Um, 
but the key is that they have to make that outreach in order to to take advantage of that. If you just hide under the covers, bad things happen. So um, reach out to that banker, reach out to that landlord, and and my guess is there will be solutions that are available and people are working really hard to have a lot of flexibility and grace in this time. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Anne, and one that I would uh, emphasize, you know, talk to your, your landlord, talk to your banker. Everybody understands that this is an unprecedented time and there are a lot of folks are willing to work with you uh, as, you know, you talk realistically with those folks about the situation. Uh, another tip that I would give is um, a lot of, you know, independent contractors, giggers, sole proprietors are struggling with, should I go down the path of the payroll protection plan or should I be looking at unemployment? My advice would be reach out to the Larimer uh, Small Business Development Center or the Loveland Business Development Center and, and, and set up a time for a free one hour consultation with them. I think they can really help businesses think through uh, whether you're um, a business with several employees or you're, you're self-employed, they can really help you think through what's the best course of action for your business and what's the best course of action for your employees in terms of providing the, you know, the most um, financial support uh, in this, you know, sort of uncertain time is that, um, you know, retaining your employees, if you have multiple employees on the payroll and using the payroll protection plan to fund that, or is it, you know, trying to put them on some kind of furlough status where they can then turn to the um, unemployment insurance, which is available and has, you know, an enhanced benefit as part of the uh, pandemic response uh, aspects of the, the CARES Act. So, uh, that's a very personal decision that's sort of dependent on, you know, each employee and employer situation. But again, I think the both of those centers are very well equipped to help you as a business owner or a sole proprietor think through which might be the best path to move forward. Great advice. And it's so cool to see all that the city is doing to help these local businesses. Going off of that, how can the general public continue to support their local business? You know, this is a great question and um, I, I'll tease a little bit. We've been given some uh, additional funding in my office to actually stand up a um, a, uh, a campaign around this. And we're uh, leaning towards a campaign that's going to focus on how we as consumers using our income uh, can really support the entirety of the economy. Um, I think a lot of people have embraced the you know, curbside pickup from restaurants or uh, your favorite watering hole or, you know, delivery of food. Um, and so I would say definitely encourage people to continue to do that. Um, you know, another thing to think about is, do you have planned expenses this year with a local entrepreneur, you know, that you could use to support a local entrepreneur? Personal case, my family always has family photos done every year. I reached out to a local photographer and said, hey, can I prepay you now? Uh, and we do our photo shoot come this fall. Uh, that photographer was ecstatic about that opportunity. And it's an expense that's in my budget as a family that we were going to incur anyway. Um, you know, if you, you know, belong to a fitness club or, you know, like a massage therapy subscription or those kinds of subscription services, consider keeping that going if you can afford to, because that will keep income coming into those service providers who are also very hard hit this time. Um, and then, you know, many of us will be seeing a stimulus check coming from the federal government. Think about how you can use that to um, enhance your own uh, you know, personal situation, but also support a local business. Um, my wife and I are actively talking about doing some landscaping that's been on the list for a long time. I think that's just some, you know, personal examples and some um, different perspectives on how we can use the things that maybe uh, we had planned or, or some of the benefits we're seeing from the CARES Act ourselves to, um, you know, to think about supporting uh, our local economy. You know, I want to say I appreciate not everybody's going to be in a situation where, um, you know, spending money to support others is really what 
they're going to be in a position to do. They're going to be in a tight spot as well. But if those of us that are in a position where we can support others think about being strategic with our dollars, I think that only is going to help those in our community that are um, struggling, many of which are service sector employees, personal care employees, you know, and um, and contractors and, and trade industries. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just follow on to Josh's comments there that um, I've actually had a lot of fun telling others about my local investments. So, um, you know, my, my Facebook feed um, for the last couple of weeks is featured when I do pick up from a local business and, and showing that off and tagging them. So telling others in your network about what you're doing and how you're, you're working hard to support those local businesses. And then as um, Josh mentioned, not only making those investments, but also thinking about your shopping habits, I think is always a good thing to consider in times like this. Certainly, um, Amazon.com has been a, a, life send, a lifesaver for, for many, many people. But um, as you're getting ready to hit that click button, stop for a moment and think about whether or not there's a local resource that could do the same thing for the same price and probably has delivery as well. Uh, a good example is um, I sent a book to a friend at first, I was running over to Amazon and I thought, oh, wait, I have old firehouse books in downtown Fort Collins that is offering free shipping. I should support them. So I, I made that book purchase through them and their online portal versus going with that national model. So um, it, it doesn't take a lot of work. Fortunately, business has been incredibly creative in trying to continue to provide services in this space of, of no contact. And um, there's some amazing opportunities out there if you, if you have to make some of those purchases. Yeah, and I'll just add to make life easier on that front. One of the things the city of Fort Collins has done is uh, we stood up a, um, a basically a GIS map um, and we're working in close partnership with the Fort Collins Chamber on listing all of the businesses that are open uh, within our community, even uh, during the stay at home order and how you can interact with them and what services they have. So if you go to fcgov.com forward slash businesses, one of the links that you can find quickly off that page is, uh, you know, support Fort Collins businesses. And that takes you to an interactive uh, web based mapping tool where you can see all of the businesses in our community that are still open for operations and what they have to offer and how you can interface with them to, to access those services or those goods. Um, so should be uh, plenty of options for you out there if you're so inclined to try to support the local economy. Definitely. It was so great to hear all of your suggestions. There are so many ways to help that I hadn't even thought of until you mentioned it. What else would you like people to know about No Cobra Covers? Well, I guess I'll start. Um, what I'd like them to know is that it is an ever uh, changing and living site. Uh, resources are being put up on it daily. Uh, so new information is being um, added. And um, I would say maybe a bit of a teaser here. We're working furiously behind the scenes to also build a, uh, a phone based uh, channel for businesses to connect. We understand that um, our business owner com business owners come in all uh, different um, you know shapes and sizes, and that some are very comfortable uh, connecting in a you know um, digital platform like the Connect Now button that's on the page. But we also want to offer a, a phone number that can get them the same kind of services. And so, um, working furiously on that, I'm sure everyone can understand. We can't really give a date for when we're going to go live with that, but it'll be as soon as we can absolutely get it set up. Uh, but that too will be added and um, actively looking for ways to make the the resources there um, more targeted, more user friendly and, and really meeting business needs. That's why the survey is important. Uh, that helps us to really understand what information people are wanting and trying to figure out how to highlight that first and foremost. And then I'll, I'll just follow up with Josh's comments to, to say that there are an amazing group of people working behind the scenes on a very, very regular basis as a region, trying as hard as we can to find solutions and to create those opportunities for business. We know that 
it can feel very isolating right now. And, and I know a lot of my business friends feel like they're, they're just out there fighting on their own. And we, we want to make sure that they understand we're here and we're doing all we can to provide resources and to reach out to us. We, we, that's why we built No Co Recovers is to help provide that connection so people know that they aren't alone. And we're going to do everything we can to try to keep the amazing business community that we have in Northern Colorado viable and ready for recovery. I love that. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to talk to me today and for all that you and your coworkers are doing to help Fort Collins through this trying time. I'm so excited to see what NOCO Recovers can offer people. Thank you so much and our pleasure. Thanks, Emily. Again, that was Ann Hutchison, Executive Vice President of Fort Collins Area Chamber of Commerce, and Josh Burks, Economic Health and Redevelopment Director at the City of Fort Collins, talking about No Co Recovers, the single source of up-to-date information to support the business community of Northern Colorado. You can access this resource by visiting nococovers.com.